There's this quote by Confucius that goes, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. And I find that to be true in so many aspects of our lives, but especially when it comes to finances. I feel like the prevailing philosophy in our world when it comes to finances is the more, the better. The more accounts, the more cards, the more different types of investments. And that leaves a lot of us feeling overwhelmed and like there are a million and one things that we need to stay constantly on top of. But I don't think it should be that way. So today, let's borrow a page from Confucius's book. I want to share with you 10 tiny ways that you can simplify your financial life so that you can manage your money in an uncomplicated way with more intention and clarity. And trust me, each of these might seem small on their own, but when done together, they really can have a massive impact. But let's get started now with the first way that you can simplify your financial life, and that's to use the two goal rule. And I find that when it comes to managing money, most people will default to one of two types. The first is the over planner. And these are the people who have 50 different goals and are just trying to do everything at once. And then the second is the ignorer. These people have an extremely hands-off approach and basically just cross their fingers and hope for the best when it comes to money. And the problem is both of these extremes that we naturally tend to can be dangerous. On one hand, over planning and strategizing can very quickly lead to feelings of overwhelm and burnout. But equally, it's important to have a plan because without direction, we end up wasting a lot of money that we could otherwise have used far more purposefully. So like so many things in life, the key here is just to find balance. We want to have plans, but we want to keep them simple. And the way that I like to do this is just to focus on two goals at a time. I like to have one long-term goal in the 10 plus year range, and then one short-term goal, usually in the one year to two year range. That way I can set my eyes on something specific, I have something to work towards, but I'm not being bogged down by all kinds of random, arbitrary, and unhelpful goals. So long term, I like to have a goal that's focused around saving for retirement and investing for the future. And then my shorter term goals tend to change more frequently as I hit one and move on to the next, but a few examples of what this could look like are saving up for a down payment on a house buying a new car, or saving for travel, or saving to have kids down the road. And so what I'd recommend is picking one shorter and one longer term goal, and then just asking yourself, what do I need to get there? And what I find is that by focusing on just those couple of goals, it actually helps us to save more because we're able to focus all of our attention, our efforts, we're able to be laser focused on something specific rather than having all of these kind of obscure or undefined arbitrary goals. Okay, and then the second tiny way that you can simplify your finances is to have just one account. These days, there are a lot of cool banking and investment accounts out there, but I feel like sometimes we'll end up opening so many accounts that it actually becomes a hassle to manage them all. So try to simplify and consolidate your accounts. I like to have just one account for each category that I need. So I have one personal banking account, one business account, and one investment account. And I really find that just minimizing the number of accounts that you have really makes keeping track of your overall financial picture a whole lot easier. And if you want to take this one a step further, you can even try looking into accounts that will combine multiple different functions into one platform. These days, there are a lot of really cool multifunctional options where you can have a personal checking and savings account and also an investment account all in one place. And then number three is to invest a lot in a little. Editing Ashlyn here, I just wanted to pop in quickly and say, obviously I am not a financial advisor and I highly recommend consulting one whenever making big investment decisions. So that's my little piece, back to the video. A lot of people try to outsmart the market and they'll spend a ton of time and resources trying to research the best crypto investments or the best single stocks. And the result is that they have a super complicated portfolio that doesn't really perform any better than the general market. So like with so many things in life, I'm a big fan of the less is more approach when it comes to investing. So rather than trying to invest in everything under the sun, pick a simple strategy and stick to it. Personally, outside of my retirement investing, which is managed by my financial advisor, all of the investing that I do outside of that is I basically just put money into a single index fund that follows the S&P 500. It's simple, it has a proven track record, and it lets me focus less on the quantity and all the places that I'm going to invest my money and more on the actual amount that I'm able to invest. The number four is to delegate taxes. I always used to find tax season so stressful and overwhelming and I was always questioning 
questioning whether or not I was doing it right. And if like me, doing your taxes is something that's caused you stress or overwhelm in the past, I cannot recommend enough hiring a pro or at the very least getting software to make the job easier. And honestly, if you have a W2 job where you're employed by someone else, using software might actually be enough to really get this one off of your plate and for it to not feel stressful. But especially if you're self-employed, hiring someone to help you with your taxes really can make a world of difference and save you dozens, if not hundreds of hours. And I can really say without a doubt that this is one of the top three things that's made running my business easier. All right, the number five is to automate investing. If you've budgeted out a specific amount that you're wanting to save each month, try making it automatic. What I like to do is to set a withdrawal to go out the day that I get paid to automatically, as soon as the money comes in, put it towards my savings. That way I'm able to save first and I almost don't really even feel that money coming in, which helps me just to be able to live on what's left. And really it helps me to kind of physically make savings a priority. And that way I'm being consistent, I'm doing it first and I'm making sure that I'm not just kind of saving what's left over at the end of the month. It's something that I'm doing as soon as I get paid and making it so it's being done on autopilot. And let me just say that if you've ever struggled to be consistent with how you're saving money, this is something that can really help. The number six is to limit the number of cards that you own. Just like with banking and investing accounts, there are so many options when it comes to credit cards. Do you want a cashback card, a travel card, a rewards card, a points card? They have all of these different features and perks and sign up bonuses, and that's all great. The problem is that as a result, we end up having way too many and we don't use them responsibly. So if you have a lot of credit cards, try limiting the number that you have to only the ones that you use the most regularly. All of those accounts can be a lot to stay on top of, and it really does just make managing your financial picture a whole lot more complicated. So just stick with what you use the most frequently and then get rid of the rest. And then once you've done that, I really recommend getting into the habit of treating your credit cards like a debit card. Pay off your credit card regularly and in full. And if you find that that's hard for you to stick to, I'd honestly just recommend closing out the account. Having no credit cards is honestly so much better than having ones that you can't manage responsibly. And that might be a bit of an unpopular take, but I really do strongly believe that we shouldn't be buying things with money that we don't have. Sure, there are always exceptions and emergencies, but let's not qualify every single purchase that we make as an emergency item that we had to have. And the seventh small way that you can simplify is to set up auto pay. Especially for paying bills, this one can save you so much time. Plus, it makes it so that you don't need to worry about remembering the exact right day of the month that you need to pay specific things. This is one of those things that you can do that takes literally five minutes to set up and makes your whole life easier. And I'm Obviously, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of exactly how much you're paying for things and that they're in your budget. But it's not necessary that you go in and put in your payment information every single time. Just set it up once and then monitor it. Then moving on, number eight is to close old accounts. Whether it's old bank accounts, retirement accounts, credit cards, or anything else. Having old, unused, or barely used accounts out there can be a lot to juggle, track, and balance. So one easy way to declutter your finances is to close old accounts. As you do, you'll be able to simplify your financial picture and who knows, you might even come across some large sums of money that have just been sitting there forgotten. And then number nine is a quick one and that's just to go paperless. Not only does paper clutter take up a lot of space, but it's also a lot harder to manage and to keep track of. So just spend a few minutes taking inventory of any bills that you still might have coming to you via snail mail. Then just go online to the respective websites and switch over to paperless billing. It will make it so that you have a lot less paperwork to sort through and file. This is something that can save you a lot of time. Of course though, don't forget that you still want to be saving important documents. I like to keep a well-organized folder on my computer, and then I can just save important documents to it as needed. And then finally, number 10 is to track everything in one place. 
Being able to see all of your financial information in one place is important because it really does help you to take a step back and be able to focus more on the big picture. A lot of times we'll focus on this card or this account or this payment. We're focusing on one specific thing, which is good, but it's harder for us to see everything as a whole. And so just by taking a few minutes to set up a way that you can track all of your financial information in one place, it can really help you to get a holistic view of what your finances look like. Like. And personally, this is something that I like to track on a spreadsheet. It's something that I created once and now about once a month, I'll just spend five or 10 minutes updating it. But if spreadsheets aren't your thing, which if they aren't, I don't blame you at all. Fortunately, there are a lot of different apps and platforms these days that can help you to track everything in one place. And what's really cool about going through this process and kind of bringing it all together is that it can also help give you perspective on how complicated or uncomplicated your financial picture is and it can even prompt you to make changes from there. And I really think that for me, the biggest difference that this makes is it helps me to be able to see just at a glance where my money is going, kind of where I'm at financially. And it, that really does provide a lot of security and peace of mind for me being able to just look at it and know, okay, we're good. We're working towards our goals. We're making progress. And I can just feel confident knowing that I'm on top of things. All right, well, that's it. Those are 10 tiny ways that you can simplify your finances. And I really hope that they help you to manage your money in a more uncomplicated way that really does help you to pursue your goals with intention and clarity. Now, I'd love to know though, what are some of the small things that you've done to help manage your money with more intention and clarity? I'd love to hear about it. So be sure to let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time though, friends, I'm wishing you an incredible day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.